Hi, I'm Daniel of Daniel Clark Architect. If you're considering building a new house or remodeling an existing one, there's something that you and your architect really need to take into consideration. And that's roof design for the coming centuries worth of cold weather. Now, we Canadians pride ourselves on being able to take in stride the coldest, harshest winters. But in reality, our homes, apartments and houses alike are not adapted to the cold winters we're going to experience in this coming century. And yes, that includes you, Vancouver. So for about the past century, BC has been getting about every seven years an exceptionally cold winter. These cold spells appear to be getting longer and colder. Now, while the thick blankets of snow on the roof, the sparkling icicles hanging off the eaves, they might be beautiful to look at, they're actually a sign of trouble. See, the thing is, the small amount of heat that makes its way through the roof insulation hits the top of the roof, the underside of the snow, melts some of it, and that melt water makes its way down to the eaves. That water actually sits there for a while and starts to make its way into the building. That's where the problem starts. In fact, every year people are injured or die trying to clear the snow off their roofs either from a heart attack or actually falling off the roof. Now, pretty much everyone with a house understands the need for clearing the snow off the roof, but what they might not really understand is the bigger reason why we have to do it. It's not so much the immediate collapse from the excessive weight of the snow, but rather to prevent the accumulation of snow from melting. See, what happens is the small amount of heat that runs up into the roof melts the underside of the snow. That water runs down to the eave. Now the eave is not over top of the building. It's hanging out in the cold. So the water refreezes. We end up with what's called an ice dam. The ice dam is this mass of ice that forms along the eave. And that growing ice mass starts to retain additional meltwater. The additional meltwater sits there. And over time, it will soak asphalt shingles, concrete tiles, wood shakes, certainly. Now, a long time ago, we didn't really have much of a problem with ice dams because the buildings were so leaky and so much heat was generated by the wood stoves, the wood burning fireplaces, the steam powered uh, radiators. That excess heat kept the roof from allowing the snow to refreeze, the melt water to refreeze. Eventually, the snow just melted, continued to melt, and evaporated. But now that we've got a bit more insulation, it does refreeze. And this refreezing results in a freeze-thaw cycle. So the water that's sitting there behind that ice dam, it'll make its way into the next layer. Underneath there's a sheet called the roof sheathing membrane. It's a paper-like sheet designed to shed water. However, it's not designed to withstand constant exposure to water for an extended period of time. So after half an hour, an hour, several hours, it will get soaked too. That water will continue down to the plywood. The plywood will get soaked. The water will continue into the wood framing. That wood framing will start to rot. The water will actually start to drip down onto the bat insulation below and then to your ceiling. The rot will, the, the black mold starts to grow on that warm side of the insulation and eventually the mold will release spores and compromise your, your family's health. So with all this bad news, how do we design to prevent the failure of the roof from this ice dam? So number one, what you want is a standing seam metal roof. It's a metal roof panel, not a roof tile. It has, comes in a range of colors and it has these ribs and it's designed to withstand ice and water and snow for long, long periods of time. So a standing seam metal roof lasts about twice as long as asphalt shingles and wood shakes and about the same cost as concrete roof tiles, but at about one fifth the weight. So you end up with a less expensive structure. It's about the same cost as concrete roof tiles but it lasts twice as long as the asphalt shingles. Over the life of your house, the 
uh, the cost is actually less because you don't have to replace the roof. Number two, you want what's called an ice shield membrane or a commercial grade roof sheathing membrane. It's this bituminous rubber sheet product that's designed, in fact, for waterproofing applications to withstand ice and water, uh, prolonged exposure to it, in fact. So if there's any water that somehow does make its way under the metal roof finish, it's not going to get any further. So something that you have to take into consideration when using an ice shield membrane is that because it doesn't breathe, it doesn't allow any vapor through it, you have to ventilate your attic properly. You have to keep the vents clear, ridge vents, E vents, gable vents, whichever kind that you have. Number three thing you want to finish off here is preventing that heat from getting to the roof. The, from Number three is preventing that heat from getting to the roof finish in the first place, preventing it from melting the snow. How do we do that? Super insulating the roof. What that means is putting way more insulation than is required by the building code. Typically, the building code here requires about our 60 bat insulation for an attic. If you increase that to our 100 or 120, you're going to prevent enough heat from making its way to the roof membrane and allowing that water to, to melt. So the snow doesn't melt. There's no water to refreeze. There's no ice dam to hold back the water. Problem solved. Now, this type of roof is generally used on commercial applications, retail buildings, uh, institutional buildings, public buildings, schools, hospitals, even park buildings. And the reason is that these institutions, corporations, they don't want to have to replace the roof after 20 or 25 years, 30 years, like you would have to do on a house. They want something that's very low maintenance and a very, very long lifespan even though it's designed for commercial buildings, it comes in a range of colors and it can be a very contemporary and elegant upgrade for any new house. So if you'd like to learn more about how to use a standing seam metal roof on your next house build or on a renovation, please get in touch with me by booking a consultation call from my website.